I think God is judging the church. I think we are in a season of divine judgment. And I'm talking about the West, uh, American church. I think we're in a time of, of judgment. And Peter says that judgment begins with the house of God. Whenever God judges a nation, he starts by judging the church. Because he holds the church responsible for the culture. Hmm. And when the church is sick, then it shows up in the society around us. And recently, as we've seen prominent spiritual leaders, multiple spiritual leaders, pastors, and different people exposed for secret sin, immorality, spiritual abuse, uh, all of the things that go with that. I believe it's the hand of the Lord. I believe he's judging the church. When God judges his people, he doesn't do it in a punitive way. He does it in a corrective way. Because what he's trying to do is purify his church. And so what he does is he exposes things, he brings it to the surface, he calls us to repent, he purifies us so that we can return to our first love and our first commandment. But on the other side of that is, I think that, uh, I think America is under the judgment of God, to be honest. I, th I think we are in a Romans one moment. This is why I have such a sense of urgency about the moment that we're living in. It's because I have felt for the last few years that we are in a window of time in which God is literally judging America. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because to whom much is given, much is required. More of the gospel has gone forth from America than any other nation. More missionaries have been sent from America than any other nation. More money has been sent to the four corners of the world in the name of the gospel and compassion from America than any other nation in history, period. Uh, we have more Bible colleges. We have more Christian resources and materials. We have more churches. We have so much. And, and because of that, we're the wealthiest nation by far in the world. We have so much that we are responsible for. But when I read, I, I just want to take this moment and just read this to you. Because this is what grabs me. Romans chapter one. Paul's writing, he says in verse 18, but the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain and obvious to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so that they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God and give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men, birds, and animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in their lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who's blessed forever, amen. I think that we are in a Romans chapter one moment right now. We have suppressed the truth. We have not honored God. We have declared ourselves to be wiser than God. We have, therefore, that has implications in our sexuality. It has implications in how we honor or dishonor our body of what we worship and what we think about ourselves. And the Bible says that when a people do that, it says that God gives them up. So here's what I think God is doing. I think we are in a window of time where God is taking his hand off a little bit that has been on our nation. He's removing his hand a little bit and saying, what are you going to do now that you feel the weight of it? Will you repent? Will you return? Because I'll, I'll restore my blessing. But if you don't, you can have it your way. And you will spin out of control into idolatry, into immorality, into violence, into division, and into chaos. Before that happens in a nation, God always deals with his church. Just like he dealt with Israel. Before he dealt with the surrounding nations, he always dealt with Israel. And I think that's the moment that we're in. Um, I think God is confronting the church and confronting leaders that we have celebrated gifting more than character, that we have cared about our, ourselves more than we've cared about God's people. And I'm a pastor, and so I take this personally. And I have dealt uh, on, on several different occasions with 
lesser known leaders that have had those same type of things. And you know, what God's calling us to is to repent, really all of us. But you can't call people of God to repent if leaders aren't repenting. So what does God do? He exposes it and he's exposing it and it's painful. But my hope is on the other side, we return back to our first love, that we pray, that we rip our garments in repentance and we say, Lord, restore the joy of our salvation. Pour out your spirit on us. We become the unified church. God begins to raise up praying churches all over America. I believe revival can restore America and it's gonna be the church at the, as the tip of the spear that calls the rest of our nation back to God. And if we'll do that, God will move. If we don't, we're gonna experience a lot of pain that's coming our way. But I'm optimistic because I just saw uh, two days ago that at the University of Florida, they just had a move of God where they baptized a thousand students in a revival move at Ohio, at Ohio State University a couple about a month ago. They had a similar type of thing where 4,000 students gathered and 800 were baptized spontaneously. God's moving on our campuses all over America, and it's gonna happen in the church, on universities, and in the marketplace, and a new Jesus movement is about to sweep across America, I believe with all my heart. So, um, I'm optimistic. 